Hey everyone, it's Casual, and today we're going to go over everything you need to know about 2x2 piston doors. This gray spot is where we're going to place our first piston door. Start by digging out an area 2x3 blocks and make it 2 blocks deep. Extend the sides out 2 blocks like this. Cover the entire bottom with redstone dust. Your redstone dust should look like this. Now take a block from each corner making a step in each corner and put a redstone torch on each step. This is all the redstone that you'll need for this door. Now we can go ahead and fill in the surface with grass blocks. We'll be using pressure plates to open and close this door, so place the pressure plates in the inside and the outside of the door. The next step is to carry the redstone signal up to the sticky pistons. Do this by putting any opaque block over the redstone torch and putting redstone dust on top of that. Do this to both sides. Once you've finished, you can stand in the middle and put your sticky pistons in place. Stack two sticky pistons on each side and fill in the middle with the block that's going to make up your door. That's it. Anytime you step on the pressure plates, the door will be triggered to open. You'll notice that this design isn't flush mount. If you were to build out the sides a little bit, you'd still see an outline of where the door is indented into the wall. But it's still an effective door for as simple as it is to make. Next we'll be stepping up our game by making a flush 2x2 piston door. I've laid out colors on the ground where some of the components of the door are going to go. On top of the blue, we're going to place the blocks that are going to make up our door. Here I'm going to use yellow concrete. The idea is that this block is going to shift over and come forward to make up the door. In order to do this, we need four sticky pistons on the side, stacked like this, and two more facing forward like this. We'll do this to the other side so that we can make up the full door. On top of the blue, let's place our blocks right away, and I'll show you how this actually works. The idea is we want these first two pistons to trigger before the last one. I'll use some redstone blocks to show how the door is actually going to function. When closing the door, this needs to happen in the reverse order, so this block needs to go, then these two. To make this work, we'll put blocks across the top of the sticky pistons and bridge it over. Then cover these blocks completely with redstone dust. If we were to power this now, it wouldn't work because there's no delay, so we need to put a delay above these two sets of sticky pistons. We'll do this by replacing the redstone right above them with repeaters. When set up like this, the door still won't work until we adjust them to have two tick delays. You can do this by right clicking once on each repeater. To power this, we need to supply power to the signal in between the repeaters. This will send a signal to both sides, closing the door evenly. We'll also extend a line out to the front of the door so that we have a lever on the front to open and close the door as well. Add your redstone and lever. And then we can go down, test the door, and fill in the wall completely so that it's flush. And there you have it, a nice, basic, flush 2x2 piston door. There's nothing wrong with this design, and you could build it right away, but I want to make it a little bit more well hidden by getting rid of the lever. Let's adjust this so that there's a button on each side that you can press, and the door will open with a delay. So we'll get rid of the levers and the redstone on top, and rebuild it with a button on the side. Extend out the wall by two blocks, and put a button right here. We're moving this out away from the entrance so that the button and redstone doesn't interfere with the sticky pistons. Once you have this, go behind the button and make a platform that's two by three block. On top of this we're going to put a redstone extender. Place redstone on the front and back like this, and put two comparators in the middle, making a loop. Now when we press the button, the signal will start, and then it will slowly diminish. This will hold our door open while we run through it. To actually use the signal, we want to replace this redstone with a block, and put a redstone torch on the opposite side. This is where we're going to pull our output from the delay. 
We can also connect up another button to the inside of our door by putting blocks here and placing a button like this. You'll see that when we press this button, the redstone torch turns off and that'll open our door. We'll power a block above it and run a line across into the middle of our door circuit like we did before. Since the redstone torch is on unless the button is pressed, our doors will be closed by default. You can also put a button here to power this block and it'll still send a signal into the delay. You see we have plenty of time to run through before the doors close automatically behind us. This works on both sides and you have plenty of time to take the button with you if you want to make the front completely hidden. We can take this design one step further by replacing the extender with a T flip flop. The T flip flop will allow each button to open and close the door independently. No matter which side you're on the door will just work. First let's take a look at how to make a T flip flop. We'll place a button here, run a line, and place another button. These will be the two buttons of our door. We want to observe the signal that runs between them, so we'll place an observer facing the redstone line, and then we need a sticky piston two blocks away from the observer. Fill in this pyramid with opaque blocks. This is the basic setup of a T flip flop. The press and release of the button send two signals into the observer. Each of these signals is one tick long, so the sticky piston spits out the block and then re-grabs it. Since the block on top of the piston is only there for one tick, we can run a redstone signal through that block and the repeater will only see one tick. Notice how the repeater only flashes for one tick every time we push this button. We can use this to our advantage by putting another sticky piston on the output and moving a redstone block back and forth to control a signal. In this case each button press will turn on and off the lamp. and it doesn't matter which button we press. At this point we've already built a basic 2x2 flush piston door and the T flip flop, so I'll just show you what it looks like together. Here we have two buttons with a redstone line between them. I used glass blocks by our sticky pistons so the redstone wouldn't interfere with it. Here we have an observer looking into our line, and it comes up into our pyramid of opaque blocks. We got our redstone on top, and it spits out a redstone block with a sticky piston. When the redstone block is next to this redstone line, the doors will be closed. When we push the button and the redstone block gets moved, it goes in front of the repeater and the doors open. You'll see that since both the buttons power the same redstone line, both buttons do the same thing. In that example, I built the T flip flop above the door, but if you don't have space, you can move the T flip flop to the side and maybe make a control room. Here's the same two buttons with a redstone line in between them, the glass blocks being used to not interfere with the sticky pistons, and instead I placed the T flip flop on the side. This sticky piston still spits out a redstone block, but I used a column of slime blocks to raise the signal up to the level of the door. That way your circuit is out of the way, and you could still use this as a ceiling and it wouldn't feel cramped. This is the perfect design if you want to remove the button and have a completely hidden base. You can fill this out and then notice that the door completely disappears. You can only enter it if you know where the button goes and press it. Thanks for following along, now you're ready to build your own 2x2 piston doors. If you learned anything at all, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell so that you get future notifications. Thanks and see you next time.